Well, hello again. What have we got here then? Well, this is the Ape Man A87 4K action camera. Now, I've reviewed more than 60 action cameras now over the past three or four years. I'd heard the name Ape Man, but never actually had my hands on one. And I finally got sent one by Ape Man for review. So what I'm going to do is give it a charge, take a quick look at the operation of it, the Wi-Fi app and so on, and then get some test clips and see how they look. But my first impression is, you see it comes in a really nice hard case with a very impressive selection of accessories. Noticeably, two backs, that will be a ventilated back as well as a totally waterproof one. Backpack clip, two batteries, wrist remote. So in other words, a really good selection of accessories. I'll take a look at the manual, give it a charge. Then we take a closer look, as I say. So to start with, let's get out of the waterproof case and put the battery in. Slide that across to open it. No doubt. Yep. Slide that across, open it up. So camera out, very lightweight. This is, of course, a pretty budget action camera. It retails at about 89, 90 pounds or something. Amazing set of of accessories for a 90 pound action camera. One thing I note, which I've never seen before also, is they've actually given you two battery covers in case you lose this one. So, and you've got two batteries there too as well. Did I say that? No. So let's get this open. God, you need fingernails. Slide that across. Put it on the deck and use a little blade. Okay, let's see if I can do this now. Slide the catch across. Okay, so slip in a battery. Now, if you look inside there, you'll see three little tags. You've got three little slots there that obviously goes in that way. I'd say that's the trickiest battery cover I've ever had to remove. Bit of a fiddle. So the battery is in. Okay, I wonder if it's got any charge in it at the moment. Yeah, obviously boots up with a opening menu that tells you to select the language and so on. Anyway, I'm going to give it a good charge and I'll be back in a tick. What is it? It's um, micro USB. And obviously I've got to find a card for it. But more of that in a bit. Don't go away. Right, so here we are back again. Well, I had it plugged in for a good long while and there was a red light showing, which apparently should go out once it's charged, but it hasn't gone out. I can only assume maybe the batteries were already fully charged. So I'm gonna fire it up and then we can see what the opening screen's like and so on. But before that, let's take a quick look at the camera. On the front, I think it's a 170 degree wide angle lens. You've got power stroke mode button in the base, as you saw flap covering up the battery. On the end here you've got an HDMI out, micro USB for charging and retrieving files and a slot for the microcard which is not supplied. Will take up to 128 gig and use class 10, at least class 10. On the top you've got shutter release which you also use in conjunction with up down buttons to scroll through menus and do up various other things. And of course it's the shutter and little light there which presumably shows when the Wi-Fi is, is on and on the back a touchscreen. So I think that covers everything there. Let's peel off these little stickers, protective stickers. And then I'll fire it up. Long press of the power button. And as you briefly saw before, I've got a menu, touchscreen, so oh, I can just touch the tick, set the date, time, Skip through this bit if you like. Insert SD card. Right, well as I say, not supplied with one. This is a 64 gig class 10 U3 from Kodak. Oops, what am I doing? And they do show you which way it goes in. It goes logo side towards the back. Presumably they're going to ask you to format it. Right, this will clear the card. Yes, confirm. Format success. Swipe up to see files where well, there won't be any will there because swipe left, right. Oh, it's got a little instruction menu here and no doubt you've got to do this. Click to switch between modes. 
choose the resolution, adjust the optical par parameters. Quickly set the number, touch zoom. Well, I've never seen that before. That's a fairly unique bit of firmware in this. So not a clone. What can we see here? Voice recording is on, battery is actually fully charged. I'm in video mode. That's, I've got two hours capacity on this 64 gig card. Everything else is on auto by the look of it. Yep, auto mode, that suits me fine. So default 4K 30 frames a second. As far as I know it, it's actually interpolated 4K. That's my understanding. I may be wrong. Obviously you can set resolution here. What do you do with it? Oh, 2.7K or 1080, whichever. That's pretty straightforward. One thing I did see in the manual was short press of that turns Wi-Fi on and off. And the Wi-Fi app is the iSmart DV, which is a generic one. Turns that on and off, Wi-Fi off, and the bottom one, short press, turns voice record on and off. So, no doubt, press the shutter. Got a countdown here. No lights flashing anywhere on it to show me that it's recording, but you've got a little red thing there and you've got a countdown. Press again. and you've stopped recording. Let's try a bit of swiping action. Swipe down, got screen lock, underwater mode, no doubt. Preferences, ah, EIS on and off. That's It has got EIS, that's anti-shake to some people. EIS on and off, low distortion, LDC. Can't go through all of this because there'd be too much to see. But as you can see, touchscreen, pretty self-explanatory, daytime, power off, system settings that is. But as I say, too much to mention. System preferences, Wi-Fi on and off. Speak, oh, beep on and off. What else have we got? Let's scroll down, screen saver, which means how quickly the screen turns off. So that's pretty easy to understand. That, that was sweeping down, swiping up. Swiping up lets you view and playback videos and photos. It's always good to just experiment with these things. Swiping left, right, changes it to camera mode. And then you've got separate menus. You've got 20 megapixel, whatever photos you've got, or you've got other settings, exposure values, film speed, that's ISO, white balance, standard, and so on. I believe it does time lapse and so on. You'd have to explore that yourself. Otherwise, it's going to be a 30 minute video come out of that one so I'm in stills mode now nice loud click there to show I've taken a still so swipe again back in video mode how do I get play mode video video playback audio on or off or if I go back out of that video playback photo playback just like that that was straightforward enough I also found also found something else that I should have looked at before. Hit the video camera button there when you're in video mode and you've got video which lets you do either ordinary video obviously, time lapse, loop loop video which is for use as a dash cam, slow mo, self timer, burst photos, time lapse. That just about covers it, right. So that was hitting the video one. So even with the manual and reading it probably a bit too quickly there is still stuff to discover well as I say I'm going to take some video and a few stills before that let's take a look at the Wi-Fi app it's called iSmart DV as I said which is a generic one and as it happens I've already got it on my phone because it's used by Victor which I've done a few reviews on Brave 6 by Acaso great camera so let's have a look at the app Okay, so the Wi-Fi app, turn on. Now, which one was it, up or down? Yeah, short press of the up, turns Wi-Fi on. Eight man, and the password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go into settings, and there it is, eight man, enter password. I think you can change it, but people's, people have complained to me 
what a simple password. Well, who's going to try and hack your camera? Connect. Incidentally, you usually do need a quad-core processor. Checking the cons team. My phone often comes up with, do you want to connect because it hasn't got any internet? Connected without internet? Yeah. Keep, keep Wi-Fi connection, yeah. Okay. Now, if you've got connection problems, it's more likely your phone. A, a lot of these things are quite difficult. iSmart DV. Add new camera. I think I probably have to go already. When you connected Wi-Fi connect, I've already done it. Processing. Well, what do you know? And there I am. I'm connected. So, as you can see, very little lag. Most of these apps are the same. iSmart's the same. You can obviously stop start video. Bing! It's recording now. Doesn't show you anything on the screen to tell you that, but it is counting down on here. It tells me I'm in 4K 60 frames a second. Battery duration, incidentally, at 4K 60 is only an hour on a 64 gig card. Shows the state of the battery. My Wi-Fi signal is probably good up to about 10 meters. Stop recording. Touch that. Change the camera mode. I'm in stills. Oh, really loud click. Touch that. You're in gallery. You can download, delete, do whatever you want. Let's come back out of that. Touch that and no doubt you can change settings. Format. Oh, it tells you I'm on 60 hertz. It's actually 50 hertz UK. Exposure concentration, continuous shooting. Pretty much everything that you can do on the camera you can do there. Of course, the advantage with these kind of Wi-Fi apps is if you're out somewhere doing an action sport like mountain biking and you happen to have a tablet with you, you could actually stop and review your footage out in the middle of the countryside somewhere on a bigger screen on a tablet. So pretty useful thing to have. So that was the Wi-Fi app. I think I've covered everything I want to say about the camera. Oh, to come out of it, obviously you could turn that off, turn the camera off to whatever you want. So I'm going to go out and shoot a bit of test footage when it stops raining. It's been raining here forever. I've built an arc already. It's in my garden. If the sun comes out, I'm going to go and get a bit of test footage and we'll take a look at that. Right, well, true to my word, the sun did briefly come out the following day. So here are my test clips. Before looking at the clips, something to mention. The card I showed you at the beginning of this, the camera didn't like that. It came up with a message, too slow, wouldn't record. But I had one of these lying around, SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 gig, Class 10, V30, U3, and for some reason it was quite happy with this. Another thing to add, the bit rates, that's in layman's terms just how much data they use on a memory card. The bit rate at 4K is more than double that of 2.7K, and so you'd need a very big card. You're going to fit it up very quickly. Now moving on to the test clips there at 1080 res, 60 frames a second, 2.7 and some at 4K. Now I find with quite a lot of these budget cameras that 2.7 is actually the best resolution. The 4K is interpolated, didn't think it was great to be honest. The 1080 I wasn't that impressed with either but the 2.7 is extremely good. Now this long video is actually rendered at 1080 because I couldn't render the whole thing at 4K but I will link a 4K version of just the clips at the end of the video. So here are the clips. Hopefully I'll add a few more if we get some decent weather and I can get on a mountain bike or something. But thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it and found it useful, uh, please give the video a like um, and why not check out some of the other videos on my channel and even subscribe. Hit the old subscribe button down there. But that's it for now. Okay, so clips are coming up now. Here we go. Right, well first off a bit of dash cam footage and then we go down to the seaside and on the way driving there we've had some hail and really heavy rain. Typical end of May weather. Not.
Okay, so here's a bit of a resolution test at three different resolutions. This is 2.7K at 30 frames a second and the sun is just popping its head out. This is 4K at 30 frames a second but as I think I said I believe it's interpolated from 1080 so I don't know that it's going to be much of an improvement over the 1080 resolution. My personal preference in my test that I did before this was 2.7K and now 1080 at 60 frames a second and the sun's disappeared again give it a minute or two it might come out again pan around a little bit here see what the rigging's like on the boat okay this is 2.7 30 frames a second and now the sun has come out but I don't think it'll be out for long k I don't know what the wind noise is going to be like with this. It's very windy. We're still on 2.7k, 30 frames a second. I quite like this shot. Right, well, very bad wind noise on this particular clip, but it is blowing a hoolie. But what I was saying was, I really enjoy the this clip because you've got the nice vibrant colour on the signs on the pier. Plus you've got a view way off into the distance there, the end of the pier, and even that ship anchored out in the bay. So I think it's quite a good test of a camera actually and this is still at 2.7 which as I said is I think the best resolution that you're going to get out of this camera. Nice and sharp, nice colour. In fact yeah, not bad at all. And then after that we go down into the arcade for a bit of low light footage and some vibrant colour again and noise. And finally, here are some motorbiking clips because the sun came out today, so I thought I'd stick on a few more. Now the camera is mounted on the side of my helmet, which just needs using one stand off this way, one stand off that way. And I put the ventilated back on. It's easy enough to change the back. Just a question of popping one out, popping the other one in. I've already had this mount on my motorcycle helmet anyway from previous tests because there are probably something like 60 camera tests on my channel. If you're going to mount it on the top, you'll probably need a curve mount, and both mounts that are supplied with this camera are flat, so mounting it on the side does away with that problem. I like the idea of mounting them so that you... and slipping in downwards, although they're not going to fall out, and people have asked how you actually get these out, because once they're in, they're in. But if you just squeeze the two the bottom of the clip like so you can slide it back out again and the reason I've got tape on that is because it's a mount for a different camera in it, and some mounts are a bit sloppy on it that does make it a bit tight though so anyway uh, clips are coming up there's a mixture of 1080 at 60 2.7 and 4k at 60 and I still the 10 1080 is not bad at all really I take back what I said about it not being very good but I still think the 2.7k is better and when I pause the video I can even read sharp signs very sharp clear video at 2.7 so here they are I'll stop waffling hope you found this useful don't forget to hit subscribe and um, possibly even like and check out some of my other vids here we go
1978 Honda CX500. What a babe.